Well, I wasn't going to show you this, but I thought I might as well um, to let you know that uh, everybody has problems with this. I wouldn't claim to be a, a, a major composites expert, uh, though I do know more about it than most people. Um, when I when I laid this up in the mold, I didn't put a flange here on the end, and so it became real difficult to pop it out of the mold. And so what happened was is I had to get a, a, a stick, a piece of board, and shove it down into the mold to pop it out. And um, you can see here that it broke the mold. So kind of embarrassing. Um, but uh, stuff like that happens, I guess. So next time I'll know better. Basically, I'll, what I'll do is I'll drill a hole through here and um, shove some fiberglass and epoxy or polyester resin down in there to bind it. Might actually put the resin on here first. Shove it down in there. So that's one fix I got to do. Another thing is, is when I was pulling this out, this frame was was uh, bending up and it cracked right here along the edge. Um, you can't see it real great. A little bit better on this other side. So the crack doesn't go all the way across, which is good. Um, but I do need to repair that. And the, the way I'm going to repair that is um, with this uni. I'll cut it. Shove it in there. Probably do two, three layers. Um, and then I'll just vacuum bag it. So that'll cover that crack up pretty good. Luckily the crack didn't go further than in about this point here so anyway I'll fix that and then um, I, there's still a little more concern about this being too wobbly or too flexible so haven't decided yet I may fill this up with foam somewhat and cut it off and that'll stiffen it up a bit um, but uh, you know this is kind of my first frame um, I think it'll still be strong enough it's quite heavy it's four pounds both halves together so not a light frame um, you know it does have a lot of carbon fiber in it so anyway just wanted to show you that yeah still running into problems got to fix some of these things you know nobody will ever see this because it'll get that uh, on the inside there and then it actually gets a strip on the outside when I join the two halves together so um, that should be plenty beefy alright I went ahead and got this reinforced with some some uni and a little bit of uh, 2 by 2 twill that I had left over and so that should be plenty strong once it's once it's out. In fact, it'll probably be stronger right there than it was before um, the break. And then, like I said, it gets a it gets a piece of carbon fiber on the outside, so it's it's going to be okay. Um, the other thing that I got here is this is where the uh, the rear brake mount um, attaches. Um, there's this point, and then there's also an option to go down here. However. Uh, on this first bike, I'll probably uh, put it up here. I think on the next one I do, I might try to put the uh, the brake, the rear brake down here on the chain stay, um, so it has a lower profile. So I went ahead and did that. I, I went and got the other side, and uh, we're good to go. Okay, so I was worried about uh, running the internal cabling. Um, you know, just a pain getting it in and out. And since this is a uh, a prototype, I figured I'd run some um, some PEX or something to help me to get the uh, the cabling up and through um, to the head tube area. So basically, what I did is I just took some white PEX. You can see it there. It's I think it's quarter inch. Um, it's quarter inch uh, inner diameter, and I ran it through. And I did one for each, the, uh, the rear derailleur and the front derailleur. And then I just took some um, great stuff, spray foam, and sprayed that on there so it would hold it in place. Uh, I was just going to use some Bondo, but the Bondo wouldn't stick to the, to the frame very good. So anyway, um, I used some clamps to clamp it down there. And then just used the uh, foam to kind of glue it in place. Now I just got to cut off some of the excess. All right, so I uh, put the uh, front chain ring on to see how everything was going to fit together, and I ran into a major snag here. Um, when I made the template for the, the front derailleur, um, I drew the template for the front side here and not the back. So, 
anyway basically what the problem is is this right here you gotta take out about three-eighths of an inch luckily most of the uh, the structural integrity of the uh, chain stay is on the back side and and I did that because I knew that this notch here would, would create a problem so anyway I'm gonna have to cut that out and then and then fill it with some uh, carbon fiber um, don't think it'll be too big of a, a structural issue um, you know, I've still got about four layers of, of uni on the back side and also some um, of the uh, four harness here so uh, don't think it'll be a, a big issue but still sucks okay I'm ready to join the two halves together so I wanted to give you an update um, basically what I've done here is I've, I've got everything lined up the way I want it um, for the top tube I'm gonna be doing the top tube first um, just because I want to use a jig to do the, uh, the chain stays the bottom bracket um, to make sure everything's lined up and not twisted which I don't think it is if it is it's like half a millimeter so it's probably within tolerance but I want it to be uh, pretty good there so um, what I've done is I've uh, spaced this uh, the head tube you know 50 millimeters so um, I found that a little bit of a popsicle stick there helped space that out to where I wanted it I'm also using these two blocks to keep it um, the two halves lined up um, correctly with each other this block here is just to make sure that the bike frame is um, an inch and a half wide which is how we created the original plug so I'll be using some uni directional cloth on this that 80k and basically I'll just be laying it on here so that the fibers are running in this direction and all that's pretty much doing is keeping the bike halves from separating apart um, I'll be filling in these gaps with some epoxy and graphite powder so that it won't compress together hopefully and it will also give the, uh, the uni a little bit more support this here is just a, uh, a shim I bought. It's a 31.8 to 27.1 shim. Um, and the reason why I did it like this is because I wanted an arrow seat, po an arrow seat post, but uh, the ones online that, that are like the regular ones, um, I don't know, they just didn't look like they'd work right. So, so basically what I've done is I've cut this uh, seat tube down and I've given my wife about a half an inch where she can drop it from where she's at now but she can take it up as far as she wants so um, I like this design I'm thinking that'll work out pretty good uh, another thing I've got to do is I've got to put some more epoxy in here there's a little bit of a gap and I'll squeeze that together that way I can drill a hole down in there and mount the uh, rear brake Back here you can see I've just got this space, it's 130 millimeters for the, the rear axle. So that's that for now. Um, when I get those uh, somewhat joined together I'll, I'll give you an update on, on how I'm going to do this part back here where it's where it's opened up. Um, basically I'll just spray some more foam in there, shape it to where I want it and lay some carbon fiber in there and wrap it around. You know this will get uni all the way up here, all the way around the bike. So. Um, We'll go to that point. All right, since my last update, uh, here's what I've got done. Um, basically, I joined the two halves together. I've uh, filled this crack in with um, some epoxy and graphite powder. I've also took a little bit of Bondo and filled in um, the chain stay there. It was, uh, the uh, carbon fiber was overlapped, so it made kind of a bulge or a bump. So I just filled that in and got most of the uh, stuff together. I've also got this um, seat tube integrated, uh, seat post, and I just used the same thing, some epoxy and graphite powder in there, and that will be plenty strong. So um, now what I got to do is I've got to fill in um, this area on the top, bottom, all the way around the seam with with some unidirectional carbon fiber. I'm also going to cut the uh, head tube off 
This is kind of cool. Um, this is not my original idea. Somebody else came up with it. They used a, a hose clamp to uh, get the line to cut uh, to cut a pipe straight. And so, anyway, um, I'm hoping that'll work out good. So there you have it uh, for now. Anyway. All right. So I put a, a layer of uni on here and down here to where the blue tape stops. Um, it's an inch and a half wide and I just used the blue tape to, to pull it down tight against the, uh, the frame there. So um, that's all there is to it really. Uh, some people use electrical tape. That works good too. Uh, I didn't have any electrical tape so I just used this blue tape. We'll see how it turns out. It's the first time I've tried it. So anyway, um, when that's done curing I will finish doing this part down here around the bottom bracket and the uh, back side up through here and then I'm going to use uh, some um, AS4 which is a, um, a 400 satin weave on the back side here just because it's such a, a narrow spot it's going to be hard to wrap the uh, the uni across it so I'll just use that plus it's not a real bad structural area since I got the uh, seat post there and it's pretty stiff back here so anyway um, I'll fill you in when we get to that point okay well um, as I was doing this I found out a good way to do it about halfway through the uh, process uh, basically what I did was I took the uh, uni cloth and the uh, made a pre-preg out of it and then cut the uh, the plastic that my pre-preg was on after I'd wetted it out I, uh, I cut it right along the carbon fiber and then um, and then used the blue tape to pull it tight and basically all I did was took it and started at the top and then worked my way down and then put a few more back on it uh, the cool thing about this blue tape is and I don't know if it's like this with electrical tape or not but it doesn't stick to the cured epoxy so you can kind of see here there's some epoxy but this uh, this blue tape um, isn't sticking to it after it's cured see how easy that came off so um, so this uh, process works pretty good and this uh, came out a lot better you can still see there's a, a few wrinkles from where the plastic was and and I'll just fill that in and um, and sand that down good so um, I've got all the seams covered now on the back side there in between the uh, chain stays so this is a uh, this is pretty much finished now it just gets uh, filled and um, sanded down nice and, and then painted and there's a few other things we'll do to it so anyway just wanted to show you that um, I don't know if I showed you this already I cut this out it's a pretty beefy tube you can see how thick that is there. I'll have to cut a lot of that out for the uh, the uh, um, the cups for the headset. But uh, so far, pleased with it.